Hi YouTube and welcome to another Doctor Who Series 8 review. This time I'm going to be talking about Mummy on the Orient Express. So if you've not seen the episode yet, careful for spoilers. Right, so Mummy on the Orient Express, what did I think? I thought probably the best episode as far this series. I thought I mean, I just, I, it was a lot of hype for this episode. Um, I mean, even so far as to go back, this is the episode where the Doctor was catching up on a phone call because if you remember back to series five of the big bang at the end of the episode the doctor's on the telephone and he's talking to um uh, someone on the phone saying oh there's a mummy loose on the orient express we're on our way and then obviously that didn't happen because i was assuming that that was what the christmas special that year was going to be about but it was a christmas carol instead but it is made reference to in the episode which i thought was really good and gus the uh the villain of the episode. I mean, the mummy. Yeah, the mummy's obviously the big, the big monster, but Gus, the actual villain. I actually really liked him. I thought he was so satirical. That isn't this exciting? I thought, um, yeah, I, I I liked that. Um, that he was the one that was essentially controlling, uh, like phoning the doctor the first time, and 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 I love that that was made reference to. The thing that sort of got me from the off go though is. Um, how the um, Clara Doctor situation that was caused last week was wasn't mentioned. Um, we saw the Doctor coming out of the TARDIS, and Clara then coming out of the TARDIS as well. And I was a bit like, well, what? Okay, so there must have been some difference in time. Maybe the original plan for the series was to split it into two halves and have series eight A end on Kill the Moon and series eight B start. Mummy on the Orient Express because there's obviously a, a, an obvious time lapse between the two, at which was thingy. But it, I know it has made reference to later on in the episode that it's their last hurrah, which um, is nice. Um, but obviously, Jenna's still in the rest of the series, so either it's going to be, oh, well, I think the rest of the episode's going to be earthbound. Although, even though she does agree at the end of the episode that she wants to continue traveling with the Doctor, but I think the rest of the episodes are actually earthbound now, so kind of doesn't make much sense but okay i'm i'm gonna go i'm gonna roll with it uh the mummy looked wonderful um actually generally quite scary and i loved the timer that appeared on the the right end of the screen um and actually counted down as the enemy was happening the opening sequence to the episode i think i might have mentioned this in another video but all the opening sequences are really sort of gripping uh with the exception of Ro uh, robert of sherwood all like the pre the pre title sequences are really grip you. Um, it just adds to the terror straight away. Like, and I love the fact that only the um the the, vic the victims can um can see the mummy um like before they die. I I I quite like that. Um, the supporting cast in the episode was was great. Frank Skinner. Is a great character Perkins I thought was one of the best um, supporting characters in this series so far uh, Frank Skinner's always wanted to be on Doctor Who he was on having an interview with Graham Norton and he was adamant that he wanted to be in Doctor Who but he was never asked so um, the fact that he got to do it I think is amazing and the fact that his character in the script turns down the opportunity to become a companion I think Frank Skinner must have been feeling pretty shitty when when that happened um, but I love the premise of the mummy that kills you in sixty six seconds. I thought the episode was the episode itself, like the concept of the episode, something which hasn't been touched on before. And I thought that that was wonderful. Foxes as well, her version of Don't Stop Me Now. I have that now downloaded onto my phone. Um, I actually love that song. Um, I love Foxes anyway. I've got her. I've got her album on my phone as well. I've bought her album. I, th I think it's wonderful. Um, but it was nice to see. Um, and the singer because we've not had his, we've not I mean we've had singers on the show before Billy Piper being the obvious one I know Foxes wasn't actually a character but it was nice to see you know see something thing and it was comparing it was it was a contrast as well because we have the old 1920s Orient Express thing but then it's combined with space so the, the two blend well together I think it lends itself really well Um, the Doctor is seeming, starting to warm up as a character as well. He seems to be slightly more caring. Um, well, I mean, certainly towards Clara 
The others, I mean, he had to let a few people die to save more, but the fact that towards the end of the episode, he had saved most of the people that were on the train and and sent them off to that, that unhappy that planet at the end. Um, I thought that was a night. I thought that's we've seen something to be, uh, something of the Doctor which we haven't seen from Capaldi yet. Um, so genuine, genuine concern and care, um, which I think audiences are gonna like a lot because of how dark and aggressive and sort of letting people die has been his thing. Um, I mean, he he does do it in this episode to a few people. But he probably saves more people than lets die, which um, which is which is good, and he she's showing his general care and love for Clara as well, even though um, obviously she doesn't love him the same way that she used to when he was in his Matt Smith incarnation. She's got Danny for that now, um, but like when he put the blanket over her on the beach, I thought that was really sort of caring. He's getting more like a father figure to Clara now, which is what you want. Um, which is the sort of relationship that you should want from an older doctor and a younger companion, and just you probably want to keep like the fact that you want to keep them safe, and I thought that and that that was good. Um, one thing I didn't like. Um, I mean Clara is becoming a much more well-rounded character herself now. She's um lying to the doctor. She's also lying to Danny, saying that um I mean obviously. The doctor's saying, like, oh, this is our last hour and stuff, and she's on the phone to Danny, and then she lies to, to Danny and says, all right, I want to carry on travelling with you, because Clara's in it for the adventure. She just loves the adventure. She, there was, an, there was never explained earlier why Clara was travelling with the doctor. When she came into the doctor, it was like, oh, it's just a traditional sort of companion doctor relationship sort of thing, and it wasn't a sort of, really explain it was just sort of you know now we, we know that she does it for the love of for the love of traveling in time and space i mean who wouldn't I and mean, we're actually seeing this now which is something which is um which is making me feel more lenient towards jenna's character and i mean her, her character her actual portrayal of clara in the last few episodes have been a lot better um i've actually really liked clara's character in the last few episodes Um, there was a lot of classic Who references. I think some of them are potentially being a little bit forced, um, but the um, Tom Baker impression and the fact that he had a tin of jelly babies which he was giving out to people, I thought that was great. Tom Baker was my um, was my favourite classic Who doc, uh, cl classic Doctor Who, um, just tied with Charlton. Um, but yeah, no, I loved um, I loved the little reference. I thought that was great. The general consensus for the episode, I thought it was it was really good. Certainly the strongest one, Jamie Mathias, and the, the the man who wrote this episode and who's writing Flatline next week, which also looks intriguing. This was that was the one um, reading about the series I was the most excited for, Flatline. Um, just people going missing, going into tunnels and not coming out of the other end. Um, the, the clip a clip for the episode's out and there's a shrinking TARDIS which is which sounds a bit interesting um yeah no I'm I'm looking forward to next week's episode like massively like a lot more than I have been I think I Mummy on the Oaks is uh, Jamie Mathias has done an amazing job he should continue to write for Doctor Who and hell I mean I know I'm probably being completely skeptical and you know this is probably the one thing that's never going to happen but I think if anyone should take over, it should be him. I really do. I think his episodes, his episode was amazing, and it's getting a strong nine out of ten. Is Mummy on the Orient Express? I've watched it more times than I care to admit. I usually watch the episodes once or twice and then do a review on them and then go back to watching them again. But I must have watched the episode four or five times already, and then done the review now. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, obviously the episode was a bit slow in places and it did have its faults, but it was it was exciting. It really was. It seemed that, like, genuinely, if I was a child and I was watching this episode as a child, I would have genuinely probably have nightmares from watching that mummy um, because you can see it's all of its ribs and... Yeah, no, it certainly should have been on you know, like, 
or half eight like it was. But yeah, no, as, as I said, I'm going to give Mummy on the Orange Express a nine out of ten. That's the highest I've given any episode this series. I loved it. And I recommend you watch the uh, full version of Fox's Don't Stop Me Now because there are little clips of um, episodes that haven't been aired yet. There's some shots of the Cybermen walking up uh, past St. Paul's Cathedral and there's shots from the In the Forest of the Night episode with the plants and things. So yeah, check that out because uh, I think there's things if... Um, it, I mean, they're only on for a second, but... Um, no, I think you should check it out. Um, it'll be good. Um, so please like the video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment in the box below. I love reading them. And um, I wasn't able to put a Gotham video up last week. Um, I was feeling too poorly. Um, so I'm going to do a double bill episode three and four video this week. And I'm also going to post, hopefully, um, record both both videos, both the Gotham and the Flash videos tomorrow. Um, and then hopefully I'll get them both up before the end of the week. So thanks for watching. And I will see you for the Gotham videos, for the Flash videos, and then again for next week's Doctor Who, episode 9, Flatline. Ciao for now.